Welcome to our channel, They Crypto. In this channel, we discuss cryptocurrencies. We answer the questions, what are they? How can we invest in them? What is mining? And many other topics that will surely entertain you and make you understand some of the fundamentals about this new technology. As you watch this content, I'd like for you to think, what else would I like to know more on? As we are driven by our viewers' questions. Here at They Crypto, we have the desire to enrich our content by addressing your questions and we will research and deliver the best information we can provide you with. Thank you in advance for watching and if you like this content, please feel free to subscribe, like and ping the notification icon. Cryptocurrency or digital currencies. Do you remember the moment crypto started making sense to you? To me it was when I realized that there was much more to cryptocurrencies than just Bitcoin. There are thousands of other coins and tokens and decentralized applications with their own unique use cases and characteristics. I remember that when I first tried telling my friends and family about this enormous ecosystem, it flew right over their heads, and that's part of why I decided to start this channel. Education is a key to the mass adoption of cryptocurrency, but the start of that crypto learning curve can be steep for the fiat believers. Concepts like blockchain mining and staking are hard to understand and even harder to explain in simple terms, as I'm sure of you can attest to this being a problem when you're trying to help your friends family and significant others understand where all your money is going and why so that's why today i'm going to tell you how to explain complex crypto concepts in a way they will understand and even how to answer the questions and address the concerns you're likely to get before we proceed there is a disclaimer i'm going to tell you many things today but none of it is financial advice i prefer to give you the educational loan that you crave to find your own way out of being a wage slave if this is your first encounter with Day Crypto, my name is Abel. I'm a crypto enthusiast and my goal is to put the highest quality crypto content on this site to counter the fat and the moon boy hide. News, reviews, coins, tokens, tutorials, tools, and much more. It all comes jam packed with entertainment so you won't be get bored. If you want to join me in my crypto fight, subscribe to the channel and ping the notification bell that shows up on the right. Remember that watching the whole way through will help this content get found. With the formalities out of the way, let me tell you how you can help others make crypto click. If my personal experience serves me right, the first question you probably get when you start talking about cryptocurrencies with friends and family is, what the hell is cryptocurrency? Okay, here's how I answered that question. Put simply, cryptocurrencies are like regular currencies, except they're entirely digital. Each individual cryptocurrency coin is fundamentally just a collection of numbers and letters. This sounds complicated, but it's actually not far off from what we see with currencies today. Here's what I mean by that. Almost every physical money bill on the planet has a unique serial number. This serial number corresponds to information like when the bill was printed, date, and location, and so on. In theory, a record of all money bills that have ever been printed and where they are kept by a central bank which shares this information with smaller banks and the government. If you have a debit card or a credit card, you'll know that you have an account number on there as well. You also have a password or PIN number that you use to access the money in that account. Furthermore, your account number and your name, because you have to provide your personal information to open up an account. This info is also shared with the central bank and government. Now, let's say you have a $20 bill with the serial number ABC and your bank account number is 123. We need to post that bill into your bank account. Your bank branch, the central bank, and the government will see and confirm that the $20 bill ABC has been moved into bank account number 123. This is almost exactly how cryptocurrencies work. Each individual cryptocurrency coin is like the serial number you see on a physical bill. Just without a physical bill. Just like regular bills, almost every cryptocurrency can be divided into smaller pieces. In the case of Bitcoin, each Bitcoin can be divided into 100 million pieces called Satoshis, which are like cents to a dollar. A cryptocurrency wallet address is like a bank account except that there's no physical card that goes along with it. It's just an account number. A customer does not need to provide any personal information to create a cryptocurrency wallet. This means that your identity is not attached to your crypto wallet like a bank account is. Most importantly, any cryptocurrency held in your personal wallet is held directly by you, not custodied by a bank like regular money in a bank account. This means that nobody can shut down your cryptocurrency wallet or block your transactions because you have total control over that account at all times. 
Now the trade-off here is that if you lose access to your cryptocurrency wallet or forget to write down the recovery phrase, you will lose your cryptocurrency. Instead of banks and the government keeping track of everyone's bills and bank account balances, these records are stored across all the computers connected to a cryptocurrency network. These transactions and account balances are public and can be viewed by anyone using something called a blockchain explorer. Because computers can earn cryptocurrency for processing transactions on a cryptocurrency network, this incentivizes more computers to join the network, to process transactions, and earn cryptocurrency. This makes cryptocurrency networks secure because there is no single point of failure. This is called decentralization, and it's the polar opposite of the centralized setups of governments and banks. That means that digital currencies that banks around the world are creating are not cryptocurrencies. They are creating a seriously dystopian payment network where the only beneficiaries are the banks or the central banking systems as they can do whatever they want and earn as they want with their hard earned money. You're probably getting questions about Bitcoin and Shiba Inu and any other cryptocurrencies they heard about. Here's what I would say. You probably heard of Bitcoin and Shiba Inu, but there are actually thousands of cryptocurrencies, just like there are hundreds of different regular currencies, such as US dollars, euros, Chinese yuan, and so on. The crazy thing is that every cryptocurrency is different, and not all of them are designed to be a currency you would actually use for everyday transactions. Broadly speaking, there are two types of cryptocurrencies, coins and altcoins, also referred to as tokens. One key difference between coins and altcoins is currency coins belong to cryptocurrency networks that were built from the ground up, and by the ground up, I mean someone spent a lot of time and a lot of money putting together the code required to create a safe and reliable cryptocurrency network. Coins are the cryptocurrencies given to computers when they process transactions for a cryptocurrency network. For example, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency coin because the Bitcoin network is built from the ground up and Bitcoin is given to computers that process transactions for the Bitcoin network. Because cryptocurrency networks are so hard to make, only a few dozen cryptocurrencies are actually coins. The rest are cryptocurrency tokens. In contrast to cryptocurrency coins, Crypto tokens are easy to make and can often be created in a matter of minutes with little to no effort. This is why there are tens of thousands of tokens. The NFTs you keep hearing about are actually cryptocurrency tokens that are like digital certificates of ownership for physical or digital start pieces. NFTs are just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with tokens. As well, for example, there's a company called Circle that issues a cryptocurrency token called USDC which is fully backed by real US dollars, which means that for every USDC in circulation, there is an equivalent purchase US dollar in the bank. Another company called Paxos issues a cryptocurrency token called PAXG. Each PAXG token is backed by one troy ounce of gold kept in a vault in London, and you can redeem PAXG tokens for real physical gold or US dollars. The best part is that both Circle and PAXG are fully regulated in the United States and regularly audited to make sure they have the appropriate number of reserves on hand. Now let's move on to security. Speaking of security, the most important thing to remember about cryptocurrency tokens is that a lot of them are nothing more than scams. This is primarily because cryptocurrency tokens are so easy to create. All a scammer needs is to create a token contract, which more often than not is copied from another altcoin contract code, set up a fancy website, pay for a few ads on social media, a few news outlets to feature their shitcoin, and they can get rich off crypto noobs overnight. Naturally, the next question your crypto curious friends are likely to crack is a timeless classic. Are cryptocurrencies safe? After all I heard are negative things such as cryptocurrencies are used by scammers and criminals. Well, this is usually my response to these sorts of questions and comments. Whether a cryptocurrency is safe or not ultimately depends on the context for starters. Not all cryptocurrencies are created equal. Some cryptocurrencies are built to prioritize speed over security, and usually the consequences of that is what hackers prey on. Mistakes from the users, access to links or individuals without knowing the consequences of their actions. It's no different than how anyone with a credit card or bank account can be also vulnerable to attacks as well. 
There are hackers somewhere looking to crack cryptocurrency networks all the time so they can trick them into creating new coins or tokens out of thin air to sell for a fancy profit. This might sound scary, but it's no different to what happens to banks and corporations on a daily basis. When hackers succeed, the affected company usually beefs up its cybersecurity. The same goes for cryptocurrencies. This means that most cryptos that have been around for years are robustly battle-tested as a consequence of always being under attack by bad actors. If you're not convinced, well consider this. As I mentioned earlier, some cryptocurrency networks are made up of computers spread out around the world that are constantly double-checking transaction histories and account balances. If you wanted to corrupt a cryptocurrency network, you would have to hack more than half of all the computers connected to the network at the same time, which is impossible to do. And if you have a cryptocurrency network like Bitcoin that has millions of computers spread around the world, it becomes impermeable. That said, some cryptocurrency networks have fewer computers processing transactions and are therefore more vulnerable to attacks. The same rule applies to centralized cryptocurrency services like cryptocurrency exchanges, which is where most crypto hacks have happened. These are much easier and more lucrative to exploit than an individual cri cryptocurrency wallet, which is insanely secure. That's why you should always keep your crypto on your own personal wallet, wherever possibly, and only keep it on an exchange when you're trading or cashing out. And when it comes to self-custody, nothing beats a hardware wallet. I have a list of the best ones on the market, which I will make a video about to help you navigate through that. Or you can leave a comment and I will answer it as best as I can. When it comes to criminal activities, it is true that ransom demands made by hackers often involve some kind of cryptocurrency, preferably Bitcoin. They almost always exchange that Bitcoin for a privacy-oriented cryptocurrency like Monero as soon as they can. This is because Bitcoin and most other cryptos have publicly viewable transactions and wallet balances. This makes Bitcoin transactions very easy to trace by authorities, even more than regular currencies. So it makes no sense for criminals to actively use and hold the currency that's so easily tracked. Cryptocurrencies like Monero are completely private and even the US government can't crack its encryption, which is seriously impressive. If you think about the overwhelming majority of cryptocurrencies are not used for criminal purposes, there are just a handful of cryptos that are actively used by criminals. Real risk when it comes to crypto relates to investing cryptocurrencies that are extremely volatile, meaning their prices can go up or down by up to 50% in a day. Investing too much in crypto can be extremely dangerous, especially when you push your luck with something called leverage trading, which basically uses borrowed money to buy into a crypto. And if that crypto goes down in price, you can then lose everything you invested in. That's why you should only invest what you're willing to lose. This is not financial advice, of course, and always research the different ways of investing. And when in doubt, consult a financial advisor to help you invest. One other question that is often asked, why are cryptocurrencies so volatile? What gives them any value to begin with? Well, here's my counter to that. What gives the money in your wallet or in your bank any value was that once upon a time, the dollar amongst many other fiat currencies were backed by gold. But that changed and since then, all state issued currencies around the world have been losing value. This is because the only thing that backs dollars and euros is ultimately the trust we have in the governments that issue those currencies which then can be manipulated up or down depending on what the government wants to do and by that i mean print as much money or charge high interest rates to curb inflation as we currently are experiencing right now unfortunately for the government that trust has been eroding for decades not only that but governments have been actively printing and manipulating their currencies to benefit themselves and the corporations that fund them at the expense of the average person this has caused record levels of inflation that incentivizes spending over saving, which leads to overconsumption and causes the sort of environmental catastrophes they claim to want to stop. You can research a video on the massive fiat Ponzi to get a better understanding, or I will have a video explain that as well, if you like further context. And trust me, it is quite shocking for those that have never seen this or understood that time in history. Anyways, after that rant, I usually go on to address the actual question. Cryptocurrencies are valuable because of what they do. Obviously, this value changes depending on which cryptocurrency we are talking about. Bitcoin has value because its coin has an economic profile similar to gold. It has a maximum supply of 21 million and only a small amount of Bitcoin is created each day. And that amount is cut in half 
every four years, assuming demand for Bitcoin stays the same. Over time, this would lead to a doubling of Bitcoin's price every four years. However, demand for Bitcoin has increased over time as we realize how weak regular currencies can be. And this awareness has been enhanced by our current events worldwide in the last couple of years. As basic economics dictate, when something has a limited supply but the demand for it continues to increase, prices inevitably rise. Many investors also see Bitcoin as a safe place to park their capital outside of the current financial system, including myself. One important thing to note is that most other cryptocurrencies are highly correlated to Bitcoin, meaning their prices are reliant on what Bitcoin does. Even though that's the case, some cryptos, such as Ethereum, have insane value due to the utility within its network. It can be used to create those cryptocurrency tokens I was talking about earlier, and you can even create decentralized applications and websites that can't be censored or shut down. All transactions related to creating and moving tokens and interacting with these applications require either to pay for gas fees, which means demand for Ethereum rises. As the Ethereum network gains adoption and the European Central Bank even issuing bonds on the Ethereum blockchain, one can see that Ethereum's future is looking quite promising and is one I am also invested in. Now, the reason why the value of Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency fluctuates so much each day is because basically nobody knows what these technologies are. In contrast, we know what the actual worth of stocks and gold are because we understand it, and they are physical assets to an extent. Furthermore, even regular currencies fluctuate every day for the same reason, but cryptocurrencies are much more volatile because what they do is revolutionary. Cryptocurrency networks make it possible to lend, save, and borrow without an identity, credit score, or bank. They make it possible to do business directly with other people and without a middleman taking a cut, meaning service giants like Uber and tech giants like Facebook or Meta become obsolete. They make it possible for communities to pull their funds together and vote on how they should be spent, which could eventually cut out the needs for governments and their crooked politicians. You could even say that cryptocurrencies are the equivalent of a powerful alien technology that threatens its dominance of the powers that currently control our markets and lifestyle to an extent. This potential makes the average crypto investor very emotional. The slightest possibility of a clampdown on crypto results in a market crash and the most outlandish rumor can lead to a massive market pump. In the longer term, however, you can see that crypto is growing and that growth is unlikely to stop anytime soon. Now, by this point in time, you probably more or less convince your cohort that crypto is pretty legit. And that means there's only one question they have left to ask you. Which cryptocurrency should I buy? Well, before you answer that question, you must remember to emphasize that nothing you tell them is financial or investment advice. Otherwise, you could end up in court. Because if a crypto investment goes south, and even if you're legally covered, you could still find yourself eating a knuckle sandwich or two. That's why I usually respond with the following. Which cryptocurrencies you decide to invest in boils down to your timeline and risk tolerance. In terms of timeline, the cryptocurrency market seems to follow a four-year cycle. We're currently in the bear market phase, which is where prices gradually come down, although I must say that we are nearing that bottom in my opinion, but I digress. Although most cryptos have seen most of their gains eaten up substantially over the last year or two, a 2-3x two to three X and more on your investments is still possible, and it's even more likely if you decide to hold until the next crypto bull market. Fun fact. Buying and holding cryptocurrency will give you about the same amount of profit as actively trading crypto, which I don't recommend you do unless you plan on making it your full-time job. When it comes to risk tolerance, it might sound a bit funny considering cryptocurrencies are risky investments, but there are varying degrees of risk even within the crypto market. Logically, the more risk you're willing to take, the greater reward you stand to gain. The easiest way to measure risk and reward is to look at a cryptocurrency market cap. This is an extremely important metric to check because the dollar value of cryptocurrencies can be misleading. A cryptocurrency market cap is calculated by the current value of that column times its circulating supply. The reason why Dogecoin, for example, is ranked so high is because it has a circulating supply of 130 billion and when you multiply that by Dogecoin's 0.05711 cents price, you get about $7.5 billion market cap. You might think that those coins presents you with an easy opportunity to get rich quick, 
but getting to just one dollar will equate to over 100 billion market cap and that isn't very likely at least not in the foreseen immediate future as a rule of thumb the smaller the market cap the more potential the cryptocurrency has to grow regardless of its dollar value that's because it takes less money to increase its value there's an extreme example year in finance year in finance at times has been worth more than bitcoin but its market cap is 20 times smaller than dogecoins meaning it would take less capital to push up the price of year in finance with the exception of dogecoin and a couple of others most of the cryptocurrencies in the top 10 by market cap could be considered low risk investments currencies like bnb ethereum or cardano are likely to be around for many years and they will likely double if not triple in price after this bear market is over the other 90 cryptocurrencies in the top 100 could still see gains of 3 to 5x but the further you move down the list the riskier the investment becomes because it also takes less capital to crash your price i would personally stay away from any crypto that isn't among the top 200 by market cap because most of the quality projects have already come out of the woodwork and going any further is just gambling in my opinion if you come across any cryptocurrencies that spark your interest you can learn about those by watching videos about them on an awesome cryptocurrency youtube channel called they crypto as we will read your comments or messages and address your questions here at they crypto we will do our research weekly and deliver you content based on the questions or concerns you have so please don't hesitate to leave a comment below you can also email me directly at abel.ortiz6.mil at icloud.com or follow me at Twitter under the handle at Ortiz6mil. The links will be below. Well, that's all for today's tutorial and how to talk to no corners about cryptocurrency. So if you liked what you saw, let me know by smashing that like button. Remember to subscribe to the channel. If you're crypto crazy, feel free to send this video to your family and friends. If you're buzzing from this new way of investing through crypto, I'd love to hear from you. While you wait for my next flick to hit the tube, here's what you should do. Follow me on Twitter or my partner at Ortiz6Mil or at TTeo77. Links will be in the bottom. And get your daily dose of crypto updates by joining us. If you're feeling generous, you can support the channel by a single like and subscribe and ping that notification tab. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.